Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to make an hexagonal pattern. This is part two of the series. So we already looked at how to use the pattern element, but let's show you what we're going to make today. So we're going to look at making this hexagon pattern. And the tricky thing is with SVG is we only can have rectangular tiles. In Illustrator, this would be really easy because you can have hexagonal tiles. So the first thing we're going to need to do is figure out how to make the tile a rectangle. When trying to identify the tile of a pattern, I just look for repeating shapes or features. So obviously there's lots of hexagons going on in this pattern. But so I'm going to bring my attention to one of them right here, and we're going to look for a specific feature of it. So we're going to look for this point, the tip on the left side right here. Then we just go left or right. So I'm just going to go right until I find the same exact instance and point. And then the same thing and just going down. So this is exactly what I did. I found the hexagon, found a mark to tip. You can do this visually or mentally, or like actually mark it on the, a piece of paper or something. And so these boundaries are going to make the tile because when you repeat them above, below, left and right, or all around, it's just going to repeat this pattern. And the tile is always going to remain the same. So how are we going to actually create this? Well, I'm going to pull up Illustrator because this would be pretty hard to code. So here we are in Illustrator. I chose the dimensions 180 by 100 and four pixels may seem like an odd choice, but based on the formula of a hexagon, let's just make this a fill. Based on the formula of a hexagon, these sides equal the diameter. Let's say they were 60 pixels long. These sides, there's six of them, are all 60 pixels as well. But the height is like 1.732. We're always going to have some rounding issues. So I chose some nice numbers that will have barely any decimals. Um, so as I hold shift and constrain the proportions as I make this bigger, the height is 104 and the width is 120 point some decimals. So I'm just going to stop that rounding. Uh, make sure this is not selected so there's no constraining and hit that. So now it's nice 120 by 104. We'll zoom right back out. And then I'm going to put this right here. And the other part of the pattern that I need is this line holding shift again to get a straight line. And now we want to see how it's going to look with a stroke. So let's hit this button. We don't need a fill in the middle. So as I select both shapes and I increase the weight of the stroke, the thickness, you'll notice there's some weird behavior going on. Why don't these connect? Well, Illustrator allows you to have a stroke on the inside of a shape and outside of the shape. With the hexagon, you can actually see it that it's inside the shape. This button will allow me to show you what it looks like when the stroke is on the outside of the shape. But SVG only allows it to be in the middle or center of the path. And so now it looks like I would expect. So this is pretty much the tile that we're going to be using. I'm going to point out one problem that we'll address later on. As I bump this up, you'll notice that the stroke leaves the tile boundaries. Now, on the top and bottom, it's leaving the boundaries exactly the same way, so they'll match up. However, on the left and right, you'll notice that this is leaving at an angle, and it's pretty high up, and it doesn't match up with the right of the boundary. That's going to create some problem for us, but we're going to address that later on. Okay, so the next part of this is to actually export this into the code editor. Now, the cool thing is, instead of actually saving this, to a file and extracting the code. SVG is all code, so we can just literally copy and paste this. Now, to make this nicer, I'm going to actually make this all a fill. Otherwise, Illustrator is going to add stroke, stroke width, and some other um, stylistic choices that will affect attributes. So that's why I went with fill, and I'm going to copy and paste that. 
it's just going to make things a lot cleaner to work with. So I'm literally hitting control C. Now we're going to go to our code editor. We're going to paste it in. Let's see what we get. So we see the fill. We don't see the line because the lines don't have a fill. It just has a stroke. And since we're not giving it a stroke, we don't see anything just yet. So you notice the code that Illustrator gives has some extra stuff. I mean, we could delete a bunch of stuff. What I usually do though, instead of pasting it directly into the code editor, first I go to um, an optimizer. I choose SVG OMG by Jake Archibald. And you can just paste it right here. So I hit control V to paste. You'll notice that a lot of uh, code has been stripped out. The file has been reduced. Um, so 100% would have had no reduction. This is less than 40%. So a lot of stuff has been stripped. So now when I go back to the editor and I paste this over, actually, I'm going to paste it for comparison. Look how sm much smaller this is than what we originally had. That's how much code has been stripped away. And in fact, the only thing we're going to really need is this view box. So I want the view box to be 600 by 500. So you'll notice we don't actually see the view box just yet. Um, let's add a rectangle to make this obvious. So now we can see the actual um, shape that we're working with. So when we put this on top of it, we kind of start seeing how this falls into place. Now we're making a pattern, so we're obviously going to make a pattern, need a pattern element. So let's bring one in. Um, so you'll notice that I have already set up some things, so we don't have to type every single thing out. I gave it an ID of P. The width of the tile and the height of the tile is what we're going to need. And then pattern units, I talked a lot more about this in depth in, my, in part one, um, but we choose this so it, the um, coordinate system is familiar to us. It behaves a lot like the view box. So the pattern tile or element actually has its own coordinate system. All right. And then the second part of this is we're going to actually give the rectangle a fill of the pattern. So this is going to repeat. So anything we put in here in the tile is going to repeat. And so now we're starting to see that. Now to give it some style, I'm going to put a group element. So anything I put in here will have no fill, a stroke of purple, and a width of the stroke will have a width of 20. We're starting to look good. So we start to see this pattern. But we'll notice the problem I pointed out earlier is we get some clipping. And that's because the tile, it starts going out of the bounds in a way that it's not matching the opposite side. So those need to match. Now there's two ways to approach this. Um, let's go back to the editor. The easy way, and this kind of works with lots of patterns, is to actually duplicate this path and put it on the opposite boundary. And where do you put it? Well, you add the width if it's the left and right, or you add the height if it's um, up and down. So to replicate this, we're going to give this an ID. And let's just call it A. And then we need a use tag. And to reference that, we'll need to give it an href of the ID A. So now we're cloning this path. And it's going to fall exactly over it. And to demonstrate that, let's give this a stroke color of black. And you'll notice it just falls right over it. It overwrites pretty much what we did. So I just shifted over 10. You can now see that we're shifting the clone over slightly. Let's go 100. So it moved over quite a bit. But it needs to go over the entire width. So let's kind of do that slowly. 110, 120, 130. You start seeing it falling in place. 50, 60, 170. And it's going to be 180. And it's falling in place. So that clipping is just this little bit, this little triangle we see. That's 
um, the way to kind of fix that clipping that you see within tiles, just clone anything that falls out of the boundary on the opposite side of the boundary. You just add the width if it's the left and right boundaries or the height if it's the top and bottom boundaries. And if it's a corner, um, you just have to actually clone to every single corner based on the width and height. Now, we don't want this to kind of stick out like a sore thumb, so we're just going to remove this added stroke, and now it blends in. You don't always need to clone. Sometimes you can just be a little bit more smart with the positioning of your paths. So I'm going to totally comment this out, and we're going to come up with one other way to approach this clipping issue. Pulling up Illustrator, the smarter solution would be to Actually, let's remove that. Put this hexagon right in the center. And this way, as the hexagon gets bigger, we're just going to keep adding weight. The boundaries, it, um, the stroke goes outside of those boundaries evenly. So no matter what part of the boundary you're on, it's going to match on the opposite side. So the clipping won't be as noticeable. In fact, it won't be noticeable at all. So as we put this back down to a normal stroke size, we just need to put these lines perfectly in the center. Now that's going to be um, a little bit off, so let me correct this. So we put it on the anchor point. This is going over a little bit. So now it matches nicely. And again, now I can just pretty much copy and paste this. I started dragging, I held Alt to clone the path in Illustrator, and then I also held Shift, so it moved in a, um, an exact line horizontally. So now we know that we can just copy and paste this right into SVG OMG, and then right into the code editor. So I'm gonna copy and paste that right in. Let's comment a few things out. So this is just the hexagon. This is the, the line to the right of the hexagon, and this is the line to the left. You could further reduce this, uh, taking this path, cut it out, and putting it at the very end. And doing the same thing with this one. All you really need is one path to do this whole pattern. I'm Matt Visiwig. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions about SVG patterns, ask in the, the comments. And I'll catch you next time.